What's up guys, Mr. Hunter here. We're gonna look at elasticity today, unit 2.4. Uh, to this point, when we have talked about a demand curve, and we've talked about any, any good, any service that we've used in any of our examples, the shape of the curve has always looked basically the same. It's always downward sloping because of the law of demand, the fact that we will buy, uh, we will buy more at lower prices than at higher prices. So that, that's gonna still hold true. But uh, the reality is that different goods have different levels of change that occur when the price occurs. So that's where elasticity comes in. Uh, demand elasticity is the extent to which a change in price is going to impact the quantity demanded. All right, so in general, goods are going to be more elastic if a change in price causes a large change in quantity demanded and inelastic if the change is small by comparison. Okay, so graphically, you're going to look at these two graphs here that we have on the right. Uh, the one on the left here is going to represent a good with inelastic demand. You notice that it's more steep. It's still downward sloping. So, as, you know, so the law of demand still is going to hold true here. But you see here with a price change of $100 to $70. So let's say it's a decrease in price. We have a relatively small increase in quantity demanded as a result. Okay, so this would be an inelastic good. I like to think of it as a rubber band, uh, whereas the the quantity demanded is the rubber band. So if it is if it does not stretch very far, if the uh, you know if we only go from two hundred to two twenty and by percentage it's not that significant of an increase, then demand is inelastic. Whereas a good like the one on the right sees an even smaller uh, change in price, but a drastic change in quantity demanded. So we go from hundred to eighty decrease in price, and we see an, a, a huge increase in quantity demand as a result. So that demand curve is more steep, I'm sorry, more flat. Um, so graphically, that's what that's going to look like. We need to get some examples here. So let's let's go into, uh, first of all, most goods are elastic in their demand. Um, so most of the normal things we're going to encounter on a day-to-day -day basis are going to be elastic. We'll get into the, some of the reasons why in just a moment. But here are some examples of inelastic goods in terms of their demand. Uh, gas is one of my favorite examples. I think it, I think it works, it works best. Um, because the idea is we need it to power our cars. You know, there's no real alternative to that other than going the drastic step of going like the electric car route. Um, but it's going to take quite an increase in the price of gas for us to actually do that. So slight fluctuations in gasoline prices are going to impact our, uh, consumption of gasoline a little bit, but not massively. I mean, we're not quitting jobs, quitting school because of a 50 cent increase in gas prices. So we're still gonna maintain a normal level of consumption of fuel. Uh, it's just going to be when the prices change drastically that we start to see some drastic changes in consumption levels. So that's a good example of an inelastic good. Uh, another one, salt. Uh, just as it's, you know, there's a couple reasons for this. There's few alternatives. Uh, for it as a, as a spice. I mean, you buy a little bit and it lasts quite a while. And in terms of percentage of our overall income, salt is such a small, uh, just a small thing that, that we wouldn't even really notice a price increase if we're buying salt every six months. So we don't need to worry too much about that. Anything that's produced by a monopoly is going to have few alternatives or none. So if that's the case, if we need it, we don't really have a choice. Uh, so we, we are going to have to, uh, we're going to have to make the purchase if it is a need. If it's a want, we can choose to forego it, which might impact and create a more elastic situation. And again, we got tap water here as an example. Again, no, no real alternatives. Um, you know, doing like showering with bottled water is not really a viable option. That's going to be more expensive than using tap water. So if your city were to hike the prices on water, you really wouldn't have much of an option but to pay it unless you had a viable option to go to instead. All right, so so tap water is a good example of an inelastic good, and really anything with an addiction factor. I put cigarettes on here as an example. Um, just, I mean, you can see the the fluctuation in prices over the last twenty to forty years in cigarettes, and you know all the all the additional taxes and things and fees that have been put onto that, and it really um, hasn't impacted consumption, it, not nearly as much as just the general knowledge of the dangers of cigarette smoking have. So most of the of the decrease in the consumption are coming from that, not from the fact that prices have doubled or tripled in the last you know twenty to forty years. So, um, so those are some good examples there. We we also need to go through what what actually are the determinants here. What are what are some of the things that cause those examples that we just gave? Why are they inelastic? So what causes that? So here's a couple here's a couple questions that you can kind of ask. Does um, can this purchase be delayed? If it's something that you have to have immediately. 
then it's going to be something that's more inelastic. So another good example of this would be like medicine. If you have like a life-saving medication, you don't really have the, the, uh, you don't have the luxury of getting to determine if you can wait for a lower price. You could, you pay what, what the price is on that item because it's a life-saving uh, item. Okay. So those are typically going to be more inelastic goods. So if you can't delay the purchase and it's a need, it's going to be inelastic. Are there going to be substitutes? If there are alternatives, then we're going to tend to have elastic demand for those things. So think of things like any, any type of like clothing item, uh, food items, like there's plenty of alternatives of what you can eat. So if something that you typically eat doubles in price, you're going to find an alternative to that and, and reduce your consumption uh, because that is a more elastic good. Uh, and then the other one, this one's kind of interesting. Typically goods that have a larger portion of your income uh, percentage wise are going to be more, uh, are going to be more elastic. I got a decent example of this. So I, I think of, uh, you know, going back to our example on, on gasoline. All right. So for most, for most adults that are working, we, we tend to pay attention a little bit to gas prices, but for the most part, we are, you know, simply looking for convenience. So, you know, we buy gas as, as little as possible. And we try to, you know, we usually run it down pretty far before we go out and purchase more. So more or less, when we see the price of gas, it's more of just an irritation uh, with, you know, because it's such a, you know, it's a small part of our income overall. And we know we're not going to be able to beat the market that much that we, it's worth our time to really, you know, to be, oh, gas is cheap. So I better fill up, even though I got three quarters of a tank. Uh, you know, it, our, our time is maybe more valuable. Whereas I would think, uh, you know, looking back at my own experiences, like a high school student, a new driver, where I didn't have a ton of money, I was trying to to beat the market a little bit because it was worth my time because that, you know, based on percentage of my income, gas was expensive and it was a large portion of it. So that's going to play in. And that would be a good example uh, to explain that idea of the large portion of income. All right, guys, that's going to be it on elasticity. Uh, we'll obviously be doing more with this on class, in class, practicing, doing things like that. Um, but I will talk to you later. See ya.